Cameron's caught you as Dan Sheehan scored that drive. Most emotional I've ever seen you in the coaching box. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually not. Um, yeah, listen, like the lads were great now. Yeah, like obviously the the second half I think was important. Like Chambers, like down that same end when um, obviously they score before half time and it's, it's go from seventeen points ahead to ten points ahead. And you're like, you've got the eight points, nine points, now ten points uh, in your mind over the last few years. So, but again, like that's going back to even what we were talking about yesterday. It's it's the learning from the past, isn't it? Like so, making sure that you keep playing. Like I suppose that's the big thing in those games that we've lost against these guys is probably got into our shells a little bit, haven't we? And uh, not quite fired enough shots in those second halves. Um, but again, that's just learning of the group. You know what I mean? As in, we're, we're not like young guys got to come through. They've got to play URC games, come in, play Champions Cup games, and learn from the experience of those big knockout games. So uh, much better in terms of second half overall. Like So uh, the intense Ryan Baird score to try and you know, when Dan scores, like it, yeah, they're, they're big moments, aren't they? So three tries in the second half to nil versus, you know, some of the, the previous outings. I know obviously there's other factors in travel and all the rest, you I mean, that, that maybe play into that. But, you know, from our point of view, um, what can we control? Yeah, listen, probably fire a few more shots. Even still, I thought we... There's plenty of bits there in the second half that we can be we can tidy up on, you know, maybe some avoidable penalties that gives La Rochelle field position. It was probably the class example, you know, before half time and give away penalty, then it is, you know, line out, another penalty, and you're like, it's that type of you know, pressure game that they have when when they're down your end where they can keep the ball for a while. And um, but overall this much better performance from us. Um which is which is pleasing, um, but you know it's it's out the back. Listen, the the, the the main thing from our point of view is how appreciative we are of the support that's out there. You know, it's you know, forty plus thousand last week, fifty plus thousand there today. Um, and it's amazing for the group to have that level of backing, um, you know, because you know what do we want as a group? You know, in terms of yes, they've gone through a lot of players learning from pretty painful stuff over the last couple of years. Let's face it. So um, just try and be better when we get the next opportunity and you know hopefully we're, we will get other opportunities but and we have obviously a semi-final opportunity uh, which is great to look forward to um you know because it's you know you want to have performances that's that the, the support want to see like they're proud of um and yeah credit to the, to the lads you know and you know, credit to you know it's the, it's the 23 not just the 15 but it's also the guys that prepared the team during the week and like a lot of selfless stuff is going on at the moment in in the group which is the most pleasing part. So hopefully we'll see that you know um, over the next few weeks. You know, so we're going to South Africa now on Tuesday. So ourselves, um, so we've got to try and juggle and manage <coughs> all that. Um, so game against the Lions in the famous Ellis Park on Saturday, and then we're down to Stormers Cape Town the following Saturday. So um, a nice trip to Crow Park then after that, which is usually exciting. You mentioned the, the familiar feeling when they scored half time. 17 point lead, reduced to 10. What was different this time, you think? What, what did you sense from players in the dressing room that they weren't going to let it happen again? Uh, well, we've talked about it quite a bit. You've talked about it pretty extensively, you know, so, you know, since pre-season, we've talked about it. Um, you know, because, you yeah, like, you've got to battle your way to get to that, back to that stage again. You know what I mean? It's not like to be afraid of it. Like, you got to learn from the, the failings of the past. So, um and so, yeah, like guys with the right mindset around that. So it's like it's this thing. You, you, as you, all of us coaches, young players, whatever it is, you just got to learn from those mm -hmm. scenarios. And when you get yourself in the situation again, to be to be better. Um, it's like you can't get distracted by some of the the noise that's out there. You know, like and I know that that's all part of it. You know, I mean, don't get me wrong. So, um, but yeah, like you, you just got to make sure you're able to think clearly as to what's actually happened in the games. And when you're in that situation again, because you're know, losing, as I said, those two games, like it's it's hard to go through. But the group is different. You know, the group is new. You know, what we were talking about yesterday, um, those uh, three transition year students asked question of the day, um, a, a well prompted question that it was. Um, and yeah, the group. You know, you need people to step into the space, don't you? When certain characters leave, um, as you know, the, some of those characters that have added so much to those. The individuals that we currently have, um, but it's also those individuals then that step into that space have their own spin on things, you know, and you want people to to step forward. So 
but, you know, it's a quarter final at the end of the day, listen, we, we, you know, there's great work on him to getting, you know, during the pool stages to get to be at the last 16 game, to have a home quarter final, you know, the work that goes on behind the scenes, commercial team to get people and bums on seats and the supporters to go out and buy the bloody tickets in the first place. Um, and hopefully we'll see that, you know, you have a, what, a three-week lead in now to a semi-final and <clears throat> it'll be amazing to get a to get a big crowd at Crow Park because, you know, you couldn't take that for granted. Like, you know, it's a lot of, you know, competition for people's attention, as we know. Um, but, you know, that's what I mean, like, we're so appreciative of the people that were there. So, um, because it means a hell of a lot to the team and, you know, hopefully that relationship stays strong um, and the crowd want to support those, the players. So, um, but that's a few weeks away. The opportunity to play in Crow Park must be particularly exciting for the players. Can you sense that from them already? Uh, we, it hasn't been just talk, talked about it at all. Uh, and that's honestly, honest to God, we even in the dressing room after the game, we didn't talk about it. So um, the odd question here or there over the last while, like, is, you know, is this a, is a chance? And yeah, ladies, and I know a lot of positive work has gone on, you know, to get this game on there, as in, but obviously you've got to get to the game first. So, you know, you can't put it, get it too far in front. So obviously now we have a game to go to, which which will be amazing, hopefully. So first thing is watch the the next game and who we're actually going to be playing against, put a plan together um, for the game itself. But in terms of the occasion part, yeah. Um, like I said, we felt very fortunate as that, as that group of players at that moment in time, 2009, to play that semi-final. Um, you know, because it's again, provincial rivalry, you know, there was a real rivalry at that time. Well. Was it a real rivalry because we were actually, remember Jerry, you were there, you gave us no chance of winning the game. We'll have to dig up that report, will we? The pre-game. Um, nobody gave us a chance in 2009 to win that game because um, it's a very different moment in time. That? Yeah, no one gave us a chance, not just you. Um, and, you know, but it's a different moment in time, isn't it now? So, but like for the group of players, like it, it's amazing to get that opportunity to do it um, because it's a, such an iconic venue in Irish society. Um, not just sports, so um, yeah, amazing opportunity for this group. And but you know, as I said, like we <laughs> trip to South Africa next week um, to get excited by. So you know, we'll play Lions as I said, Ellis Park, um, then the Stormers, and you know, then we'll start making a plan for for that um, whatever semi final, whoever that is, Bulls or Northampton. Leo, obviously, um, you got through today's game with any serious injuries, thankfully. But how quickly do you have to make a decision? Um, you've got to go to South Africa. It's a tough one, but logistically, um, with regard to players, and yeah. having your, you want your top squad obviously available for, for Croke Park and whoever you're going to play in the semi-final there. But uh, how quickly do you have to decide on a squad to bring to South Africa for those two games? Bear in mind that we keep continuing on the URC. Well, we're know. leaving on Tuesday, so we're going to get some names into the uh, airlines to get on the plane for starters. So, um, yeah, yes, and we'll see how everyone's pulled through and make a plan. Um, the good news is, like, is that we've got guys that are reaching to play as well. So um, that's the important bit, you know, making sure we've got guys that are, like, hungry to be there, like, and they're, you know, chomping at the bit of it, waiting for an opportunity. So um, we'll make some calls and um, whoever goes out there will hopefully represent the team and the group well. And, like, at this stage in the competition in Europe, yourselves, Possibly don't know. Obviously, Toulouse will get through as well. Maybe, but it looks like if, you, if it's your Sams and maybe Toulouse, you've a lot of experience at this stage in the competition. Whether it's winners, finalists, semi-finalists, is that an advantage over some of the other sides that may get through? The likes of Harlequins, perhaps, or Northampton Saints, or the Bulls, or whatever. It's on the day. Like I don't know if it is how relevant it is. You know what I mean? Because teams are on different what curves in terms of their own development all the time. Um, you know, like obviously we've played against a great opponent that's you know won the tournament the last two years. You know we know ourselves. You know we were once upon a time a team that won the tournament two years in a row, but the year after that we couldn't qualify from our group because we lost. If you remember to Claremont, home and away, so we were dropped into the Challenge Cup, so we couldn't get out of the group. So we know how bloody hard it is. The way the tournament is now, you know La Rochelle, you know made it into the knockout stages but obviously they had to go the hard route so they've had to go to South Africa so we know how bloody tough it is to go three in a row like and you know it's obviously we've got to two finals and you know now we just need to focus on getting ready for a semi-final and not getting too excited by anything really it's just getting back to the preparation part and doing the work um 
because you got to put in the work. You know, there's no no one's going to give it to you easy, is there? So wherever we play, Bulls or Northampton, um, Northampton, you know, playing some great rugby at the moment. Bulls, you know, have a huge squad of players. Obviously, they've travelled up with a, quite a different team that we would have played in the RDS a few weeks ago. We've come unstuck against the Bulls in the game. Nobody gave them a chance that semi final, if you remember. But again, that was off the back of us. Losing the final where we sort of you retrieve know, to some of the emotional ups and downs. It's, there's so many different components to this playing rugby this time of year. So again, on the day, making sure you have a good plan in place and trying to execute the plan as best you possibly can. So um yeah, listen, we'll see who we are playing for us. It's again it's hard to even comment about it now because you don't know even who you're playing against. Mr. Tom, the, the Kryptonite, the <coughs> Star Kryptonite, is uh, Joe McCarthy the Larochelle Kryptonite? Um, hopefully, yeah. Listen, like is in you know, that's this uh, you know, sort of opponent out of the way, and it's it's on to the next opponent really. So, uh, Joe is someone who's been progressing all the time. Uh, was unlucky because he remember he had an injury this time last year, and only really got a little bit back late at the end of the season, and he was one of those tight calls. Um, but Joe, you know, since the end of last season, he's had a good run into the World Cup. He's picked up unbelievable experience. You know, he's someone who loves his. Like his the craft of being a rugby player, um, and you know, so he's such a very he's such a positive outlook day to day in terms of improving his game all the time. So, um, hopefully, he's a big player for Leinster into the future for sure. Um, but yeah, listen, as in I don't know because I don't know we'll, we'll play this opponent again. Um, but yeah, listen, Joe has been has been great uh, this season, um, and you know he's a young player. He's progressing all the time and hopefully he continues with that mindset which is so wonderful to see like that having a player that has that mindset that's always looking to get better. Thank you.